Elon Musk just announced a major SpaceX plan for Starship version 4, everyone. There have been hints about a version beyond Starship Block 3 for a while now, but Elon's recent post makes it official. So, what kind of beast are we dealing with in version 4? Let's dive in and find out. So, here's the slide Elon shared summarizing the Starship roadmap. We've got, of course, versions 1 and 2, and version 3 is expected to fly for the first time by the end of this year. Next to version 3 on the slide is the much larger Starship version 4. According to the slide, this future version of Starship is expected to feature an 81-meter tall booster and a 61-meter tall upper stage. Interestingly, the booster height closely matches the Starship 3 design shown back in April 2024, which came in at around 80 meters 2.2. That lines up with the 4,000-ton propellant capacity and 10,000 tons of liftoff thrust Elon Musk mentioned in a recent presentation. The upper stage is now 61 meters. This change fits with Elon's comments in May about a future version being about 20% more efficient than the current V3 design. That brings the total height to 142 meters. However, Elon noted that this slide is just meant to give a rough idea of what SpaceX is aiming for with V3 and V4. The slide itself will need an update, since Elon's current target scale is closer to 150 meters tall and 7,500 tons total mass. With this version, they're aiming for over 200 tons to orbit, even with full reusability. Starship version 4 will feature 42 engines, with three more Raptors added to a significantly longer upper stage. These additional engines are vacuum-optimized Raptors, or Raptor Vacuums, RVAC. Each RVAC is a variant of the standard Raptor engine, equipped with extended, regeneratively cooled nozzles designed for maximum performance in space. They aim for a specific impulse of around 380 seconds. In the center of the upper stage, Starship still uses three sea-level Raptors, which are gimbaled, which basically means they can swivel for steering and are capable of reigniting for landing burns. The new layout expands on the familiar triangular configuration. Now, the design includes three central sea-level Raptors, surrounded by six RVAC engines in a hexagonal ring. This symmetrical pattern improves structural stability and evenly distributes thrust, reducing mechanical stress during ascent. Now here's a fun fact, the number 42 is also a nod to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. In the book, the supercomputer Deep Thought calculates the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. And that answer is 42. But beyond the trivia, adding three RVACs to Starship's upper stage offers real performance benefits. The most immediate gain is increased payload capacity to orbit, especially in the tanker variant. Since orbital refueling is essential for interplanetary missions, boosting the tanker's performance is crucial. Currently, it takes around 8 to 10 tanker flights to fully refuel one starship in orbit. The 42-engine configuration could significantly reduce that number, making missions more efficient. More engines also mean more thrust, which improves launch performance and reduces the amount of propellant needed for high-orbit transfers or interplanetary insertions. Missions to Mars, Venus, and near-Earth objects, NEOs, could benefit the most. Another major advantage is a faster main engine cutoff, MECO. With greater thrust, Starship can complete its boost phase sooner, allowing more of the ascent to be powered by the stretched upper stage, increasing mission efficiency. Unlike Falcon 9 or Neutron, where the expendable second stage encourages optimization of the first stage, Starship's full reusability shifts the focus to a heavier, more capable upper stage. For future Mars missions, this is especially important. SpaceX wants to pre-deploy equipment before humans arrive, and a higher thrust vehicle makes it much easier to deliver large, heavy payloads reliably and more often. Beyond raw performance, a nine-engine upper stage brings significant safety and control improvements. With only three engines, a single failure is serious. It can throw off the vehicle's balance and potentially cause a dangerous spin. With six vacuum engines, thrust can be redistributed, maintaining stability even if one engine goes offline. This fault tolerance adds a layer of safety during critical flight phases. Starship does have a reaction control system, RCS, that uses hot gas thrusters powered by pressurized gases from the main tanks. But if those tanks are compromised, for example, if a leak led to loss of RCS effectiveness, control can be lost entirely. More engines with differential thrust give Starship another way to maintain control, independent of the RCS. The increased engine count also improves hot staging. With just three RVACs, all engines need to ignite at once during stage separation, and their plumes can impact the booster's grid fins or heat shielding, risking damage. With six vacuum engines, a staggered ignition is possible. For example, only two engines can ignite initially, one's positioned to direct their exhaust away from sensitive components. 
followed by the rest once separation is complete. This makes the entire process safer, smoother, and more efficient. Now, Starship Block 3 is already a massive upgrade over the current Block 2. It's expected to complete production and testing by the end of the year, with heavy flight activity planned for 2026. Block 3 will focus on missions closer to home, like deploying Starlink satellites, Earth orbit operations, and even lunar missions. But Starship Block 4? This version is all about Mars. Technically, SpaceX still believes there's a slim chance of reaching Mars next year, which means some early Block 3 flights could actually be headed for the Red Planet. During the Flight 10 webcast on Monday evening, the same launch attempt that was scrubbed due to weather, SpaceX spokesman Dan Hote confirmed this possibility. He said the plan is to send minimally viable landers to Mars, landing directly on the skirt of the vehicle with no landing legs. This will just help prove we can actually get to Mars, Hewitt said. Focus on learning just as much as humanly possible, demonstrating what's needed for Mars transit and the ultimate landing. It's a bold move and a surprising one. Landing without legs on uneven terrain raises big questions. Maybe they'll target smoother landing zones, but either way, it shows how serious SpaceX is about testing real Mars hardware, not just simulations. If all goes well with that experimental Mars fleet, SpaceX plans to ramp things up for the next Mars-Earth launch window in 2028-2029. For context, Earth and Mars align favorably for interplanetary travel roughly once every 26 months. We'll attempt to land the initial infrastructure and start delivering more equipment while evaluating available resources on the planet, said SpaceX's Amanda Lee, who co-hosted Monday's webcast with Huit. She also mentioned that Optimus, Tesla's humanoid robot, will be along for the ride, helping with the initial heavy lifting on the surface. Then, starting with the 2030-2031 launch window, Hewitt said the goal is to increase the payload per ship, continue building infrastructure, and start producing propellant on Mars for return missions. He said by 2033, we want to double the amount of payload per ship as we get closer to building a self-sustaining presence on the Red Planet. Reaching this point won't be easy. After all, Starship hasn't even reached Earth orbit yet. Elon Musk has highlighted several major technical hurdles, one of the most critical being the development of the vehicle's heat shield. This shield is essential for protecting Starship during atmospheric re-entry and is a key component for achieving full and rapid reusability. It becomes even more crucial for Mars missions, where the entry conditions are significantly more extreme than those on Earth. Another major challenge is in-orbit refueling. The upper stage of Starship is launched with minimal fuel to maximize payload capacity, meaning any spacecraft headed to the Moon or Mars must rendezvous with multiple tanker ships in Earth orbit to top off its tanks. No one has ever demonstrated propellant transfer in orbit, let alone at the massive scale Starship will require. The more we analyze it, the more unlikely a 2026 Mars launch window seems. A 2028 mission window is starting to look much more realistic. Wait, maybe this is why Elon said Starship version 4 will fly in 2027. That would give SpaceX a year to test and refine the vehicle ahead of a 2028 Mars mission. Starship Block 4 really is meant for Mars. Speaking of it... A Starship mission to Mars isn't just Elon's dream anymore. The Italian Space Agency, ASI, has signed an agreement with SpaceX for an uncrewed mission to Mars aboard one of the company's Starship rockets. Announced on August 7, the deal includes several payloads, a plant growth experiment, a radiation sensor, and a meteorological monitoring station. ASI expects to collect data not only during the six-month cruise to Mars, but also throughout the mission's time on the Martian surface. ASI President Teodoro Valente declared, Italy is going to Mars. He called the agreement a first of its kind and said it shows Italy's commitment to leading in space exploration. SpaceX COO Gwyn Shotwell shared the excitement, saying, Get on board! We are going to Mars! SpaceX is now offering Starship services to the Red Planet. Interestingly, Italy's deal with SpaceX goes around the European Space Agency, ESA. Still, the country has been a key player in ESA's own Mars plans. The ExoMars mission, set to launch in 2028, will carry the Rosalind Franklin rover, designed to drill two meters below the surface in search of preserved organic material. ASI barely just made headlines at the end of last month when it inked a deal to develop the first human lunar outpost with Thales Alenia Space building on the Italian Space Agency's 2020 partnership with NASA to coordinate bringing astronauts back to the moon under the Artemis Accords. Coming in third after France and Germany, Italy contributed 800 million euros and 15.8% to the European Space Agency's 7.68 billion euro adopted budget for 2025.
It's also been heavily involved in the ExoMars mission, which seeks to launch the Rosalind Franklin rover around 2028. Italy is actually the biggest contributor to ExoMars, with the UK coming in second. While ASI hasn't revealed the exact numbers, Italy originally agreed to cover about 40% of the mission's cost when ESA member states first approved funding back in 2007. At this point, it's pretty clear. Starship version 4 isn't just a concept. It's the version SpaceX is betting on for Mars. All the upgrades from the stretched upper stage to the extra engines aren't just about raw power. They're about making Starship reliable, efficient, and capable enough to handle the demands of actual interplanetary missions. But let's not forget where we are. Starship hasn't reached orbit yet. Orbital refueling still hasn't been demonstrated, and there are a lot of unknowns when it comes to landing heavy hardware on Mars, especially without legs. Even so, the pieces are starting to fall into place. If version 4 really does fly in 2027, SpaceX will have a year to push the system hard before committing to anything major. And based on what we've seen, they're not waiting around. They're already thinking about landing test vehicles, deploying infrastructure, and getting Optimus out there to help on the surface. It's crazy how fast the Starship program is changing and evolving. Just a few years ago, it was basically a giant tin can that exploded under overpressure. Now we're getting closer to having a real Mars vehicle. So let's not miss any updates from this program or all the other exciting stuff happening in space by making sure to subscribe to the channel. It would also really help us out a lot. Thank you.